All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny here, Sky Dude 103, and we're going to be visiting friends in Germany this month. Make sure that I'm actually streaming here. Uh oh. Let's see. I don't think we are yet. Hasn't kicked in on YouTube. Bum, 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 bum. Come on, YouTube. Do, 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 do. It says we're on, but I'm not getting a preview yet. Come on, YouTube. An error occurred. Let me let me refresh the YouTube studio and see if we get a preview. There we go. That seemed like an appropriate image to put up for Germany. I mean, I mean, you know, if somebody says, "Well, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Germany?" Uh beer Oktoberfest I know really nothing about Germany despite being born there <laughs> I was only there for the first year of my life not a whole lot to remember you know maybe some baby food but you know who, who remembers anything in the first year of life so I think Hans and Henning live somewhere up near Bremen here. This is my first time, uh, well, second time. We did some flying Friday. And I think they live over here near Bremen. But if they show up today, I'll absolutely get locked into a uh, the local airport that they're using. So it looks like we have some nice landmarks over here. I'm not sure what this is. But we're going to go check these out. Volks Park Stadium. So yeah. Yeah, until we get uh I can't remember where we were where we were flying the other day. So I'm gonna come down here and start in Bremen then. Or near it. And I've got the icon A5 for the moment loaded in. They actually have a an airport down here in Bremen. I don't see one. Usually, there's an airport around every corner over here. EDXU. This one here. EDWX do 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 that might be it I think that's the one that we started out EDMZ And it just changed the flight conditions on us. We don't want it to be nighttime. Oh, you. All right, let's try that. Hope you had a good weekend. Mine was uneventful. I got a lot of sleeping in yesterday. Well, it's because I'd like pulled an all nighter the night before. Just wiped out. Do, 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 do. So yeah. Don't know much about Germany. That's a nice image. Two biplanes.
And let me load up a Bush Talk Radio now. Maybe. And that way, if we... Uh, there might be some audio tours over here. Just have to load it in here now. We are taxied. Okay, great. Okay. So now that that's done, we, um, Okay, there we are. Hunter Wesser Nuclear Power Plant. The nearest thing on here. There's a whole bunch of them uh, over to our, our east. Valentin Submarine Factory. Now let's go find that. That's a little bit... If we go uh, west at the moment, we should hit both of those. We just gotta follow the river down. Okay. The, U uh, the pretzel app is working again. I don't know if I'm gonna be continuing to, to use them. I'm still... I'm, I'm having... Just the worst copyright problems with them at the moment. They're like, well, we guarantee the the music for the day of the live stream, and that's it. Wow, man. Jeez. Thanks. And then after that, they everybody has fair game to copyright flag you, all the music in your live stream. So, you know, in a live stream, we you know, you might hear 30 tracks. So I get like 30 disputes on each live stream and then I can't monetize them. Crafty little buggers. Okay. I love the icon. She's a nice sport plane. Get her flaps up. go ahead and go to my audio and turn turn down the simulator we're not gliding today yeah maybe touch okay
And we are headed west. Looks like uh, one of those points of interest might be on the map over here. So we are passing a town called Bokel to our right. I don't know how to put it. Low? Left? Just a touch. It's so green. Isn't the icon neat the way she looks on the inside? Looks like a car. Oh, forgot to raise landing gear.
So it should be directly ahead of us. And on the other side of the river. Pause the music there. We should be getting our audio tour here in just a moment. So quiet. So this should be a power plant. Well, it doesn't look like our traditional, uh, at least my exception of a power plant. Unterwesser Nuclear Power Station is an inactive nuclear power plant in Klein and Seal, near Nordenham. When it first went online, it was the largest nuclear reactor in the world. Wow. It had 193 fuel assemblies. Unterwesser was one of the seven reactors shut down on the 17th of March 2011 pending the results of a three-month moratorium on nuclear power. On the 30th of May 2011, the German government announced that Unterwesser would not be returning to operation following the moratorium and would be decommissioned. The final fuel rods were removed in February 2019. The Unterwesser nuclear power plant. Low-pressure turbine rotor. Hmm. Well, these look like apartment buildings. But I suppose that's the best way to not draw attention. Yeah, that looks like an apartment building. Uh, hopefully, uh, it may not be actually showing us the right thing. Unless it's been handmade in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it sometimes just puts down autogen buildings. Either way, we are in the right location for it. So, uh, yeah. That's where the nuclear plant is. Okay, we're, we need to go south now. Back out here, close that one. 
The next point of interest, audio tour wise, is submarine factor. We just need to follow the river. my first time uh, times flying in Europe if you followed any of my shows you know that I for the last uh, year or so pretty much just stuck to Colorado and the United States and uh, started doing cross countries in the United States and so uh, yeah All new territory to me. Last week was a long, 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 probably the last two weeks. Uh, the trip from Colorado all the way down to the tip of Argentina. And that was an eye opener. Going into Mexico really was really beautiful. The Andes were really beautiful. Every bit of it was, was very pretty and um, Thought it was going to be a lot more arid and you know frankly unattractive and <clears throat> no i was wrong everywhere i go there's always something something beautiful to see he has made a beautiful planet or she depending on how you see things What is the name of this river? It may say, but I have to turn my head sideways and I can't read that. Make it too small. A different map. Lesser Marsh. And we're passing Recton Flet. Schreiber. Why Wildberg? Sandstedt.
Often Warden. Probably turn on landmarks. Make sure we get them all. Yeah, that's better. There is, <coughs> there's Henning right now. Uh, worth Fleth. Let me pause right there and ask Henning, what is your, what is your home bait? Uh, your what is your home airport we are trying to make our way down to this uh submarine submarine facility right here in Nur newer Kirchen. Okay, so okay, so Henning's uh home airport is E D W U. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and we'll get to this submarine place. And then we'll transport back over there to E D W U and we'll make that our home base. And then we'll start figuring out the area around that. So let's go ahead and unpause here. The submarine facility is not too far from us now. On the curve of this river Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stay here for a month, I think, Henning or so, uh, or a month or so. Well, we'll see. I, uh, I don't know how long it'll take to become familiar with Germany, but we'll stick around here.
Really? Things as a reflection of this struggle to study our perception of self. Uh huh. That way isn't necessarily a thing you achieve. Rather, it is a state of mind which you constantly strive toward. This all comes from an understanding that ideas aren't static, but fluid, like water. Be like water. I suppose that might be the case for some artists, but I, I just drew things because it was cool, like superheroes and Conan. I didn't think I was trying to find the broken parts of myself or react to society in any way by creating. You know, I, sometimes art is too full of crap, especially in academia. Like water, huh? The Valentin Submarine Factory is a protective shelter on the Visa River at the Bremen suburb of Riekum, built to construct German U-boats during World War II. The factory was under construction from 1943 to March 1945 using forced labor, but was damaged by air raids and unfinished by the end of the war. The Valentin Factory was the largest fortified U-boat facility in Germany, and was second only to those built at Brest in France. By March 1945 the facility was 90% completed and the most of the necessary machine tools had been installed. Production of U-boats was due to begin within two months. After the war when the machine tools had been removed further bombing of Valentin was carried out. Beginning in March 1946 Project Ruby was a joint Anglo-American affair to investigate the use of penetration bombs against heavily protected concrete targets. Because it seemed impossible to destroy Valentin by bombing it the decision was made to destroy it by blasting. This idea was later abandoned because the blasting would have caused severe damage to the nearby villages of Recom and Farge including the power station in Farge. In 1960 the bunker was taken over by the German Navy for use as a storage depot. High maintenance costs forced the German Defense Ministry to offer the bunker for sale in 2008. Military use finally came to an end on the 31st of December 2010. Its custodianship was passed to a group called Dincor Bunker Valentin with the intention of developing it as a museum and a memorial. The group currently offers guided tours of the bunker to the public. I think that would be far out. I would love to see something like that. That would be really, really neat. Okay, so now we're going to uh, EDWU, and that's going to be our home base for a while. Let me pop back into the cockpit here. And go... To, it doesn't have an autopilot, but it does have a nice... Uh, a GPS. E, D, W, U. That's activated. Okay, so let me zoom out. All right, so this is going to be our home base over here for a while. So let's go ahead and head on over that way. And let's look over here and see if there's anything that we want to get. 
No, but Bremen's a little bit ahead of us. Let's go ahead and pull the audio up for that one. The city municipality of Bremen, low German also, Bremen. Bremen Bram is the capital of the German federal state free Hanseatic city of Bremen, a two-city state consisting of the cities of Bremen and Bremerhaven. With around 570,000 inhabitants, the Hanseatic city is the 11th largest city of Germany as well as the second largest city in northern Germany after Hamburg. Bremen is the largest city on the river Weser, the longest river flowing entirely in Germany, lying some 60 kilometers upstream from its mouth into the North Sea, and is surrounded by the state of Lower Saxony. A commercial and industrial city, Bremen is, together with Oldenburg and Bremerhaven, part of the Bremen slash Oldenburg metropolitan region, with 2.5 million people. Bremen is contiguous with the Lower Saxon towns of Delmenhorst, Stur, Ahim, Wey, Schwanweed, and Lilienthal. There is an exclave of Bremen in Bremerhaven, the city Bremen overseas port area Bremerhaven. Bremen is the fourth largest city in the Low German dialect area after Hamburg, Dortmund, and Essen. Bremen's port, together with the port of Bremerhaven at the mouth of the Weser, is the second largest port in Germany after the port of Hamburg. The airport of Bremen lies in the southern borough of Neustadt's Neuenland and is Germany's 12th busiest airport. Bremen is a major cultural and economic hub of northern Germany. The city is home to dozens of historical galleries and museums, ranging from historical sculptures to major art museums, such as the Bremen Overseas Museum. The Bremen City Hall and the Bremen Roland are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Bremen is well known through the Brothers Grimm's fairy tale town musicians of Bremen, and there is a statue dedicated to it in front of the city hall. Bremen has a reputation as a working class city. The city is home to many multinational companies and manufacturing centers. Companies headquartered in Bremen include the Hoche Chocolate Company and Vector Foiltech. Bremen's best known football club is Bundesliga club SV Werder Bremen, who play in the Visa Stadium that sits directly on the bank of the visa. Um, isn't there a, a children's tale, a famous children's tale about Bremen? It's like a horse and a, it's like some animals all formed together to defeat some robbers or some criminals. I, there's something in my memory about that, like, a horse and a sheep and a chicken. I don't know. But the animals, um, like the, there was the horse and then the other animal was standing on the back of the horse and then the chicken was standing on the uh, back of the sheep and they ended up scaring the criminals. And I think that's the statue. the uh something like that let me uh get the plane under control here a horse chicken and a dog and a cat okay so you know what i'm talking about so it's not just <laughs> so a horse a a chicken a dog and a cat It's a donkey. Okay. So yeah, there's these criminals that are roaming around. And there's a donkey. And the dog stands on the back of the donkey. And the chicken or whatever. Then there's the cat standing on the dog. And then the chicken standing on the cat. And in the middle of the night, the burglars didn't even know what the hell it was. And it scared them so bad that they fled. And so there's a statue in Bremen of the uh of that. And uh at some point in time they were the heroes. And it, who knows? You never know if, the, if something like that is true or not. But you know, I have definitely seen animals riding on each other's backs before. So who knows? There might be some truth to that. Don't know. All right. 
we're going to turn now and we're going to head to EDWU. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and... <laughs> yeah, same thing about fourth grade. You did a presentation on them in fourth grade, but you've forgotten. Yeah, I mean, I remember that was one of my favorite stories as a kid. Uh, But yeah, but I don't remember anything either. But that's the gist of it is the animals scared the burglars. Like I was saying, we're going to head to EDWU. Uh, over the next couple of days, I'm going to load up NeoFly and we'll start taking jobs around here and we'll start getting comfortable with, um, with the area. We'll just kind of make it home for a little while and, um, and learn what we can learn, uh, about Germany. All right. Uh, let me turn back on the music here. Newenlanda, Newenlanda. I'm saying, uh, uh, Henny saying EDW is actually bigger than it's portrayed in the sim, which I find a little bit uh, sad. But it's awesome to be in such familiar areas, even in the winter. Yeah, I feel the same. I mean, it, it may not be.
ground like that, like, oh, uh, Lingen there. Yeah, not a problem. Got a major highway here. Fun fact, it was quite frequently used in World War II, and they had an ass and they had asphalt runways, but they were bombed by the British. So there used to be a lot of asphalt bricks in the area, but they all got picked up. Wars suck, man. It's so unfortunate. Very sad. And the further we go on, just the more destructive. The more destructive and powerful our weapons of war are. And in a blink of an eye, I watched a movie recently called Monuments Men. And it was a group of... A group of men that were in the army, but they were all older men, but they weren't soldiers. They were art historians and museum curators. And their job was to just run around and try to make sure all the history that they could save, if they could save any bit of history, they just ran around trying to save paintings and save sculptures and you know, during the war, a lot of, uh, you know, famous cathedrals and landmarks and just so much stuff gets destroyed. It's so sad. Okay, here's Bergdorf. And Kloppenberg should be directly ahead of us. Yep. Put some trim in here. It looks like Kloppenberg is, if I've got this right, there it is right down there. Matter of fact, yeah, it talks about the museum there. Kloppenberg. Life is so wonderful. When you're a little kid. So magical. Everything is magical.
like we got some wind pushing us. But I let go of the controls. He wants to turn. Put some trim in. Wait a little bit. You have a thousand. Ah, it will be maybe in twenty twenty four. They'll give us maps that are much more highly detailed. They're not too bad now. It does my city pretty good. I'd say all the maps are probably about 10 years old, though. But it's not too bad. Right before the show, though, I, I did load the um, world update for Germany. So it should be a little bit better than what it was the other day. Oh, around here is a beautiful zoo. Oh, there's a beautiful zoo down here. is the plane he reset the drone down here this is a zoo somewhere Yeah, we'll do live weather once we get more situated. Today I wanted to definitely make sure we were doing sightseeing. And we should be at Clappenburg in just a moment. I really like this new icon. Well, I got the um, the mod the mod for the icon, so she's a lot more powerful. Not a lot, but I'm running on pretty low low power, and she's still just holding her altitude beautifully. <clears throat> 
Well, right now I'm lowering it some more. I'm trying to come down about 10 miles or so. And that is probably it over here. this way so I don't know what the type of I, I, I've been told uh, it's not called Gelberus there's a lady that runs a German deli not too far from here and they have those wonderful pale veal sausages um, I just call them all bratwursts But they that's my favorite type. It's a uh, it's made out of veal and it's very very pale. It almost looks white. And uh on the inside it's it's very very pale as well. And there's a, a a lot of different types of sausages in Germany. I would want to try them all. I mean, I love food, man. Period. Doesn't matter. Uh I will try anything once. And it there is for 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 a man anyway like me. It doesn't get any better than, you know, a stick of meat, a meat of any kind. I have fond memories of shopping with my mother. No, no. Yeah, that's probably what I mean. I mean, it, there's none of them look like it. I mean, it doesn't look like anything else. I mean, a lot of the different sausages that I've seen in trying to find the name of it, uh, it doesn't look like any of the other ones. That for sure. That's for sure. A lot of the other ones kind of look alike. I mean, it would be very difficult to be able to identify them all, but. This one is the only one that's really, really, uh, very, very pale. Yeah. Uh, I will look it up. Do, do, do.
Okay. We're very near it now. Just follow follow this. Like there's a road here. Or not. Yeah, this road goes around. Holland, like Van Halen, we say it in America, Halen, but the town up ahead, Holland, Halen. Eddie Van Halen's father was Jan Van Halen. Holtinghausen. Pronounce that one B M S T E K Bumstek. So this is going to be our new home base town for a while, and our airport is going to be EDW, EDW, WU. Yeah, best not to. Dumb American. Pretty. Commercial. Commercial place over here. Oh, 
larger buildings. All right, one mile. There we go. Game should be. We should be. This should be the area of the museum here. According to this thing. Close. The Klopenburg Museum Village and Lower Saxon Open Air Museum located in the Lower Saxon County town of Klopenburg is the oldest museum village in Germany. The museum is a research and educational establishment specializing in cultural and rural history. The Lower Saxon Open Air Museum is a non-profit organization. Although the museum does not set out to compete for visitors, in 2009 the Klopenburg Museum Village had more visitors than any other museum in Lower Saxony. In 2004, the museum was visited by more than 60,000 students as a part of their school curriculum. The museum village was laid out in 1934 by the Klopenburg senior schoolmaster, Heinrich Ottingen, and was ceremonially Oops. opened on Ascension Day in 1936. On the 13th of April 1945, six houses in the museum village were destroyed by artillery fire, oh, shoot. including the Quatmanshaw farm. By 1962, this farm had been rebuilt in a way that was faithful in detail to the original. The second museum director after Heinrich Ottingen was his son, Helmut Ottingen. Since 1996, Yui Miners has been the director of the Open Air Museum. All right. So we're here. This is our new home for a while. And this is Henning's home. Pretty big place. You're looking at the school. I was looking at the school. Back a little bit. There's the city park. Okay, so from the city park, where's the school? Zoom out a little bit. So I've got the city park centered up there. Ah, okay. So there's the museum over there. And then there's these big buildings here. And then across the way there's the city park there. In this area, I think. Um, let me pull up the street map. Far down as I go. Oh. All right, so from here, 
The airport is just behind us. Oh, I wish I could search for things. I, I, I can't pull it up like over here. That's the best I can do. I could go to Google and pull up a better one. I'm, sh I'm sure. Go to Google and go to Kloppenberg. I've got a map. There's the museum. There's the gymnasium you talked about. St. Augustinus is the college. You've got a Pizza Express. Pizza's everywhere, man. A tattoo parlor. Time bomb tattoo. Oh, it's a preschool? St. Augustine's priest St. Augustina's preschool. Asked me to find a bot of strophs. <coughs> Is this the street? Bonhoff Strofs. And then here, there's the gymnasium. parlor that's where we're gonna be eating dinner tonight the moonster moonster lander hoff
Everyone needs a place to lay their weary head. For travelers visiting, uh, visiting Kloppenberg, Munsterlander Hof is an excellent choice for rest and rejuvenation. Well known for its family friendly environment and proximity to great restaurants and attractions. So it's not a restaurant, it's an inn. The hotel rooms offer a mini bar and air conditioning. Subway? No, I don't want to go to Germany just to go to Subway. There's, I like this. Beer house? Beer house. That's where we're going. Restaurant Fleming, Golden Pearl, Grand Roch. The Margot, huh? Got a McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. Taj Mahal, Kloppenberg. see here Margot M-A-R-G-A-U-X Day first hotel Kloppenberg restaurant Margot Bistro there it is Yeah, I don't know if I could afford that place. Might be a little bit too, too expensive. All right, so if I just keep going, let me go forward a little bit here. can imagine.
tall building right there. So there's a stadium further north and your house is like two streets away from the stadium. Um, this, I don't know if this is a stadium or just a field here, but this is the first thing that looks like a stadium to me. That's the stadium, you say? All right. We turn up the graphics down here while we're getting a good look. And of course, Chris is calling when I'm doing a live stream. It's not a big deal. Hang on. You say hello to Christine. Hello. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, why not? Eve? Okay. Um, please unlock. Oh, okay. Just... All righty. I love you too. Bye bye. <clears throat> okay. So let's see if we get a little bit better look. Probably not going to be stellar. We're not running a NVIDIA or anything like that. But, okay. So looking north now. Just a kilometer. So you live right around here. There's a roundabout.
way to create our own markers to be able to share with our friends. So you could put your own marker for your house on the map and then you could share it with me and it could make it easy for me to find. Or we can create our own routes and we can create our own markers on the map and then share those with our friends to do trips. Take a right. And then straight. So I see the stadium still over there. Oops. Let's take that right, right there. That's back to the main street that we were on. Going to the street that's more to the right. I don't know if that street continues through. It doesn't look like it cut through somebody's yard. This would be the very next street to the right here. Okay, so the street actually continues. Let's 
so we're in the general we got we, we got the right idea we're right in here somewhere across the street over here on the main street directly in front of you yeah that's this is the main street here Or you're saying this is a main street? So now we're in the general vicinity. We got above right now and turn right Back on the main street. Turn right. Left and forward. between the two streets so you see a street you go left well I see a street next street is way up here and then you go left Okay. Looking back uh, west again. Let me go back to where I was. Turn right, 90 degrees. This way. I was literally on top of your house. Here's a turn on the road here. We're in between the two streets right here. This is where I was. Turn back around. To go left and go forward. Okay. At the end of the street, directly in front of you, that's your house. Oh, 
All right. We're in the right spot. So let me look back this way. There is the... So for future... There is the stadium over there. So do you drive or take a bus or ride the bike? How do you get to your school? Now you need to just go forward. It goes left, but stop there. Yeah, it turns left. L-shaped house. The only one that looks like an L at the moment. There's one that looks like an L over there. That's an L-shaped house. That's it, huh?
What an amazing technology. It's not perfect, but, you know, again, going in the future, it will be. It'll be much better photogrammetry, and it'll be way more accurate. And the fact that we can even do this, the fact that I can find your house in Microsoft Flight Simulator blows my mind. And as long, you know, they've got the general shape right, and, you know... Such amazing technology. Now, the guys from Asobo, are they Germans? Is that why this is such a good software? Is because they're all Germans? I think I they they all seem to be German. But I'm not entirely sure. Alright, so now let me go up and Okay, so I can get a good idea. Yeah, it's the only L-shaped one around here. Let me look for that stadium. Okay, so for the stadium, take that road. Okay, got it. All right, so from the stadium, get my mouse over here. Where are you, mouse? So, off of here, come down here, come over here, and turn in here. This is our new headquarters for a while, folks. Pretty easy to remember. And then it's part of this U. It's on the U. And it's part of the teardrop. <laughs> You're waving right now. <laughs> That's great. All right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over to EDWU and so that's it. We're we're right next to it. Is this is this it? So it says the airport is right in front of us. Behind me is a highway. Okay. All right.
<laughs> glider pilots. Drunk glider pilots talking to air traffic control. Oh yeah, this is where yeah, you said this is where we're gliding the to the other day. Yeah, okay, I recognize this now. Put my gear down. Oh, that's my... There we go. You're down. Gliders fly in the south and the other ones in the north. This one here with the markings is for planes, and the one over here just to the right is for lighters. All right, so this is going to be our home airport for a while. touchy
see some gliders over there. That looks like a biplane back there. All right, welcome to our new home for a while. So there's Kloppenberg on the bush talk map, and we are right over here. directly south of us look at this one this is going back to the roman the roman days romans versus the the germans the battle of the teutoburg forest described as the varian disaster by roman historians took place in the teutoburg forest in 9 ce when an alliance of germanic tribes ambushed and destroyed three that's right regions and their auxiliaries led by publius quinctilius varus Varus, was led give me Arminius back my legions, Varus. Varus's auxilia. Arminius had acquired Roman citizenship and had received a Roman military education, which enabled him to deceive the Roman commander methodically and anticipate the Roman army's tactical responses. Despite several successful campaigns and raids by the Romans in the years after the battle, they never again attempted to conquer the Germanic territories east of the Rhine River, except for Germania Superior. Wow, I didn't realize that was so close. Uh, I play a lot of, uh, well, I like playing Rome games, like Total War, Rome 2, whatever. And that usually comes up. I mean, that's just a big part of the history. And you always see, uh, you know, something flash across the screen. Give me back my legions, Varus. And they, uh, it, they, they fictionalize that in movies a lot. Uh, I think there's one on Netflix. That's dealing with all of that. I think it's, I think they call it Barbarians. Might be one of the Barbarian series. But yeah, man. Germans got their asses hand, uh, the Romans got their asses handed to them. An entire legion. That's crazy. And that's just right down the street from where we're currently at. Okay. What else we have around here? Oh, probably. Not too far. 20, 30. Okay. There's submarine pen. A high voltage direct current link. Arcology. The Exhibition Center for the Archaeology of the Emslant is an archaeological museum in Meppen in Lower Saxony, Germany. It portrays the cultural history of the region of Emslant from the Stone Age to the Middle Ages. Since 1996 the museum has been housed in a modern construction within a classicist building complex on the Koppelskleurs. 
The permanent exhibition displays the prehistory and proto-history of the Emslant with archaeological finds, models and illustrations. The most important research findings of New Stone Age house building, Bronze Age and Iron Age material culture and burial customs to the settlements of the Roman Empire period are presented. Museum education options for children and schools and changing special exhibitions enhance what the center has to offer. Another nuclear power plant. I'm going to take a little break here. Sure. Uh, it's actually 3 o'clock. Probably going to wrap it up. But now we have our new uh, home base situated. We have all these things that we can be checking out over the next couple of days. <coughs> and then um, I'll go back to Neofly and rent us a plane. Well, we got the Cessna Grand Caravan. So we will gonna have to move that and then we can uh, possibly take some jobs around here and start flying jobs back and forth around here and that'll get us accustomed to the area pretty quickly so i'm gonna have to move the plane so let's do this So we need to go to the hang. We need to go to the pilot and move the pilot. Will you? It's going to cost a lot of money. Eleven thousand. No, that can't be right. One hundred and fourteen thousand dollars to move my pilot <clears throat> to this location. And I'm like, why is it so expensive when I was talking to the developers about this? Like, why the hell is it so expensive to move your pilot and plane? It's going to be silly expensive to move the plane. We're going to probably just have to rent one here. And they're like, well, it's instant. You're, you're moving instantly. Therefore, if you were moving in, at instant speeds, that would be the cost. It would, how much it would cost. Ah, I see. All right, so our pilot is now at EDWU. Go to the hangar. Instead of just, let's see how much it would cost to move the plane. Another 114000 That's actually cheaper than re-renting it. Whatever. Okay, so now it has an up. Okay, so now we can. There we are here in the map. at EDWU, and now we can uh, start picking jobs. Nothing within 50 miles for a job, 62 miles. EDU, ETUO, are all about 60 miles. $13,000 for 60 miles? That's not bad.
Pilot, let's see what's on the books for you today. Hello, Pilot. Let's see what's on the books for you today. Ready for engine start. So, uh, this job to this airport. It's got a bunch of X's on the runway, so they're going to decommission. Or there's just X on that soft spot, but it looks like there's X's all the way. X, X, X. So they're going to decommission this runway. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. you could help with this job. I have some tourists that would like to take some photos as you circle the point of interest. Oh, really, huh? Hey, Captain, we have the tour guests climbing on board right now. Remember to say cheese. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. All right. Weights. flying to here. Separator 
on. All right, America. There's a little town around here called America. Very nice. Barrel Bush is the name of the place where the airport is at. Okay. I need to turn down the graphics again. Now we're starting to get a little bit of lag. But I had it up pretty high for uh, trying to find the buildings. All right, so our first job in uh, Neofly in Germany at our new home base from our new home base. Short little 60 mile hop will make $13,000. I don't know that it's euros. weird I'm getting a don't sink I'm not gonna sink getting a lot of lag lots of lag I don't know what's going on with the thing come on settle down wow horrible 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 lag and rubber banding So it's not you, it's not the computers, it's the internet at the moment. Just went through some subspace anomaly or something. Everything was freaking out for a minute. doesn't like whatever is going on. <laughs> Germany is infamous for the terrible internet, so the game is pretty realistic. Uh, with that point, Henning says. Funny.
man. So we're going to a place called Hangle, Hangler, no, Hangelo. Steppenbrook, Loniker, and we're going to we're going to a stadium, the Grolsch Vest. Coliseum Forum Forum Pantheon It's funny they got this blurred out That's weird They don't want us to see the Coliseum there Did that all blurred out Right next to the water facilities, water treatment. Ooh, wonder if that smells. Ooh, these places usually stink. I would not want to be right next, unless uh, unless it's just pumping. And but these looks look like wastewater. And usually around these things, it stinks to high heaven. I wouldn't want my stadium right next to it. Oh my gosh, a week. Oh, you know what? There's a problem with uh there's a problem with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, at least it used to be. And I don't know if it is anymore, but let me show you. We have a ways to go still. Okay, yeah, we got a ways to go still. Okay. If, let me pause this, grab a cigarette, 22 minutes after the hour, it's time for the smoke break anyway, so if you got, uh, smoke if you got them, all right, so, downloading problems that I've encountered, I have a very fast internet, and it's pretty, pretty fast to download Flight Simulator, but... One day I was messing around in general options, and I was messing around with data, 
and I came down here and I turned on data limitations because I thought, well, uh, I don't know why I was messing with this, but I think I turned it down. I just had it on uh, because I didn't want to have it doing any of the rolling cash stuff, right? So I think I had rolling cash off, uh, whatever, or, or ba here, bandwidth two, right? And I didn't have this set to unlimited. I was messing around with this. I was trying to broadcast on OBS in the early days and trying to figure out how to get the stream to look good. And so I thought, well, I don't need to have it streaming a whole lot of stuff. So I came in here and probably changed it down to something low like this, like five megabits a second, okay? And at one point in time, and I don't know if it still is, but if you mess with these settings, when you if you uninstall it and then reinstall it again, it will use these settings, all right? So it took me three days, two or three days, Normally it would take me just a couple of hours at 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 most to re-download it. And because I had messed with this stuff, now this stuff is saved in your in the cloud, on the in the Microsoft Cloud. And so anytime you're gonna uninstall and reinstall, make sure you come in here, set the bandwidth to unlimited, and make sure there is no data limitations set on. You don't want anything to slow it down. You might want to turn off rolling cache. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. But, yeah. And then I found out that it's a known bug, and it was at that time. I don't know if it still is, but if you're ever going to do that, uninstall it and reinstall it. Make sure these are set to maximums. Okay, light my cigarette here. All right, you have a great day. I'm glad I found your house. I'm glad we've got a new um, headquarters to start from every day, and we're going to get to know Germany really well. And uh, I'm going to be able to find your house like it's like it's my house pretty soon, I think. We'll see. All right, I'm going to finish this job, and then we're going to call it a day. And yes, I will see you tomorrow, and we'll uh, continue exploring Germany. Have a good night. Halle Halls, Halls und Beinbruch. I butchered that. All right. Lingen, Nordhorn. Kirsten.
nice barn house. Big. Like another little air fill down here. If not, that'd be a good place to land if you needed to. Emslant Nuclear Power Station is a nuclear reactor located in the district of Emslant, Germany just south of the Lingen nuclear power plant. The reactor has 193 fuel elements totaling a core weight of 103 tons. It is a type reactor. It is owned by RWE Power AG. There have been no events higher than zero in the inner scale. Emslant power plant consists of three natural gas-fired units. Units B and C were commissioned in 1974 to 1975 and refurbished in 2012. The units have a net capacity of 476 megawatts each. This is far away, but... The Enshedda fireworks disaster was a catastrophic fireworks explosion occurring at the SE fireworks depot on the 13th of May 2000 at 1300 hours GMT, in the eastern Dutch city of Enshedda. A fire led to an enormous explosion which killed 23 people including Damn. four firefighters, and injured nearly 1,000. Oh my gosh. A total of 400 homes were destroyed and 1,500 buildings damaged. 
The first explosion had a strength in the order of 800 kilograms TNT. Oh my gosh. While the strength of the final explosion was within the range of 4,000 to 5,000 kilograms TNT. The biggest blast was felt up to 30 kilometers away. Fire crews were called in from across the border in Germany to help battle the blaze. It was brought under control by the end of the day. SE Fireworks was a major supplier to pop concerts and major festive events in the Netherlands. Prior to the disaster it had a good safety record and met all safety audits. Footage of the disaster was featured in a 2009 episode of the Discovery Channel show Destroyed in Seconds. All right, need to make a small heading change here. A few degrees. Close enough. So we're doing a tourist run in NeoFly right now, try to make $13,000. And we need to fly these passengers over to this place, circle it, let them get a few photographs, and then I think we head back.
Thank you.
The Enchetta fireworks disaster was a catastrophic fireworks explosion occurring at the SE fireworks depot on the 13th of May 2000 at 1300 hours GMT in the Transporter. eastern depth. You are less than two nautical miles from the POI. Stay under 1,000 feet. All right. Okay, turn around the POI as close as possible until they are done taking pictures. The Grosvest is the stadium of football club FC20. It is located in Enschede, Netherlands, at the Business and Science Park, near the University of 20. The stadium has an all-seated capacity of 30,205 with a standard pitch heating system and has a promenade instead of fences around the stands. It hosted the final of the UEFA Women's Euro 2017. The Grosvest was expanded during the summer of 2011. On the 7th of July, when working on the construction of the stand, the roof suddenly collapsed, killing two workers and injuring 14 people. Transporter the from collapse dispatch. was probably Enough caused by too much weight on the Good unfinished job. roof. You can come back. After an investigation of a month, the roof was taken away and work continued. FC20 played the first few competition matches partly without a roof. The new stadium was officially opened on the 29th of October with a competition match against PSV Eindhoven. A year after the accident, a monument was unveiled. Oh man, that's, that's tragedy. That's neat how it's elevated like that. So you could just you could just come in. Oh, uh, but they do have the wall there. Right. Uh, and un unfortunately, I didn't catch what she said there at the end. We have to go back, try to gross, and then turn around, <clears throat> then come back to EDWU. Okay, so we do have to go back. Okay. Okay, so. This, and we don't need Bush Talk Radio anymore for today. Toronto, pause.
and put it in a nav mode. Two. All right, 60 miles back to EDWU, our new home base for a while. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is the, uh, my, wow, that's an interesting complex down there. Very neat. Very neat. Uh, I normally fly in the United States and uh, I've been doing all my training in Colorado. So I haven't really been leveraging the simulator for all the wonderful things and places you can go until now. So this is our first, uh, repositioning into Europe. We're starting in Germany to hang out with some friends. Uh, Hans and Henning, and so we'll be doing, uh, we'll be staying here for a while and using EDWU as our home base for a while, and we'll start doing some jobs around here so we can get familiar with the area, and uh, like I said last week, geography has never been, well, I can't say I really ever took geography. I used to be way more inquisitive when I was a kid, and I used to have a globe on my desk and knew where stuff was. And, you know, and that went away. I couldn't tell you what's where at all. I have a much, uh, after doing my trip down south last week into Argentina, you know, I could definitely say, well, now I know where Mexico and uh, Panama and Nicaragua, and Honduras, and Ecuador, and so, you know, now I know my way around South America a little bit, but I, you know, I know that Belgium's around here somewhere, I'd like to find that, I guess that's to our west, uh, east, or west, sorry, and we know that uh, France, not too far from here, and, uh, anyway, so I'd really like to get to know this area better. And then we'll start doing some other cross countries. Back and forth across Europe. See what we can see and learn what we can learn. It's handy having that little thing like a Bush Talk Radio. Um, we've already covered all the, pretty much all the points that were, that are in range today. And we are heading back to EWU. That's where we were when I shut it off. That's where we are in the world. There are a lot of points of interest around here. Well, of course, this is where all the history comes from, you know.
four o'clock. I need to speed this up a little bit. Very smooth. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with it. I do have the um, streaming data on. So it's uh, probably trying to send me the maps. Again, I've never flown here, so there's a lot for it. It's trying to send me. I think. All right, we are here.
Five hundred. wasn't the softest landing I've seen. Transporter from dispatch, clear the runway and taxi to parking. Alright, we've done it. We are here. Other one. Other way. And we should now get paid. Transporter, you can disembark the tourists. Nice. Okay. We have done it. So thank you for tuning in to one episode of 103. Yeah. 103. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll pick it up tomorrow. Same time, same bat channel. And continue on with our, uh, Given them some great angles for their photos. I did. I did. I did. Everything's on board. Right. So see you tomorrow. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.